The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you Husky! <laughs> Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserve law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> Captain McCarthy had retired from his sailing ship and for two summers had panned gold in the Yukon. His pet parrot, Skipper, was his constant companion and had spent many years on the sea with him. The captain was a hearty old salt with a fund of stories, and Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted liked to spend evenings with the old man listening to his tales of the sea. Yes, Sergeant, here we are, Skipper and me, dropping anchor in the Yukon again. <laughs> we both missed the swing of the sea, but... Last summer, we panned enough gold to give us a calm winter in California with no hard blows to bother us. <laughs> well, it's nice to have you back, Captain. King and I both missed you when you left, didn't we, boy? Hi, King! Hi! Hi, King! <laughs> Hello! Well, listen to that bird. He hasn't forgotten King's name. He remembered it as soon as he heard it. You know, I believe King remembers Skipper. <laughs> Skipper has a sharp memory. He's nobody's fool, and that's a fact. <laughs> you still think he's smarter than my dog? I'll wager a gallon of grog he has a better memory. Remember when I taught him to shout orders to King the way you do? <laughs> yes. But I'll never grant that he's smarter than King. Let's see if they remember that trick they used to do. King, go over and see Skipper. <laughs> I told you that bird had a memory. <laughs> but look at that. King remembers, too. He's lying down in front of Skipper. You know, I think my dog is just as smart as your parrot, Captain. And I wouldn't put it past you to have rehearsed it before we got here, you old fraud. <laughs> hat. Hat, Skipper. Good morning, King. My hat, Mark. <laughs> you see? Skipper remembers that, too. <laughs> well, blast my eyes. Look at that, will you? The dog is lugging him your hat. <laughs> I told you so, Captain. Guess we never will settle the argument as to which is smarter, your parrot or my dog. <laughs> They're both clean-timbered and good shipmates. <laughs> well, I hate to see summer come to an end. King and I missed you and Skipper when you left last year. And if it weren't for Skipper, I'd stow my duffel here for the winter. <laughs> but he can't stand the cold. He used to be tough as new hemp, but he's getting a bit rusty in the joints like me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, more company coming aboard. Uh, hoy there, Doc. Step in. Hello, Captain. Sergeant Preston here. Oh, hello, Sergeant. How are you, Doc? They told me I'd find you here. <laughs> oh, that's quite a bird you have, Gary. <laughs> Quiet, Skipper. Take some slack in your jaw tire before I heave you overboard. <laughs> Now, maybe we'll have a calm for a spell and hear what you're saying, Doc. I wanted to see you, Sergeant Preston. A very serious thing has happened. Yes? A bad epidemic of smallpox has broken out in the Indian village. Smallpox? That is serious. An Indian boy who used to work for me came in with it. He says many of them are sick and some have died. I'm afraid it'll spread into town if we don't do something about it at once. They'll all have to be vaccinated. And those who already have it, isolated. That's just the trouble, Sergeant. You know these Indians, superstitious... Frightened. If I attempt to vaccinate them, they'll disappear into the woods and spread the disease worse than ever. Yes, I know. I may be able to convince them. I had the pox once. My chin whiskers hide the scars. Lost half my crew with it. But Skipper and me come through. Ah, you were lucky. Another thing is to try to make them destroy the furs they're planning to trade. They're contaminated and they'll spread the disease everywhere. We might organize a committee of miners... But I don't like trouble with the Indians. Using force won't do. Uh, I'd hate to risk it. Hi, King! Hi! Come in, King! Come in, King! Is that parrot calling your dog? <laughs> it's a trick we taught him. Smart pair of lovers they be, too. Hi, <laughs> They'd make quite a vaudeville act. Yes, yes sir. Uh, vaudeville act. Hiya. Doctor, I just thought of something. Yes? Captain, you say you had the smallpox once. 
Would you be willing to go to the Indian village with us? Well, if I could help any. My timbers are rotten a bit, but I calculate I could still lay into it with a belaying pin. We wouldn't use force. We'd use your parrot. Skipper? What do you mean? Hello? Doctor, have you ever seen a totem pole in the Indian village? Uh, no, they have their medicine man. I never go near the place. There's a totem pole in front of the chief's lodge, and Skipper looks just like the figure on top of it, a beak bird. Well, what's that got to do with the pox? The Indians have never seen a parrot. I think Skipper's the first one that's ever been in the Yukon. And I saw to it they didn't see Skipper. <laughs> They'd want his feathers for their heads. I never let an Indian get a look at him. They wouldn't hurt him if they thought he was a spirit. A spirit? A spirit on the totem pole. Coming to tell them how to drive the sickness from their village. But how could you Captain, do... Captain, how long would it take Skipper to learn how to say, burn furs? Well, I can teach him anything in a half a day, just by repeating and repeating. We'll start right now. I'll spread the word to the Indians tomorrow that a strange talking bird has come to them. The following evening, the Indians were gathered in an excited group before the lodge of Cheap Whitefeather. They listened eagerly as one of the tribe repeated the story of the bird that talked. Noma! Noma! Police, him say bird come over many waters. Look like Naka on totem pole. Talk like man. Maybe come drive evil spirit from village. Black Hawk want me talk. Black Hawk speak. Me, Black Hawk. Big hunter. Got many fur. Black Hawk say white man play trick on Indian. Maybe steal furs. Black Hawk say bird is white man trick. Me say kill bird. Come on. White buffalo say Black Hawk not fool Indian. Him part white. Him not true son of Naka. Him not know. <laughs> Chief White Feather say make bird welcome. If him not Naka, then we kill him. Make bird welcome. We see him. Look, white man, come now. The Indians watched as Preston, the doctor, and the captain entered the village. The old captain made an impressive picture with the man's cap, his white beard, and the brilliantly colored parrot perched on his shoulder. King stayed at Preston's side as the Maori talked in low tones to the captain. Is that box of vaccine still tied to Skipper's leg, Captain? He keeps trying to cast it adrift. Lay away from that box, you son of Satan, or I'll slit you from clue to earrings. Ahoy! Ahoy! Lay off, you lovers! Lay off! Stow your chatter, Skipper. <laughs> Act like a total ball. I hope this works, Preston. As well if we handle it right, Doc. Doc, that's White Buffalo. King, stay close, boy. Bird <laughs> red. Green like Naka. Him Naka, you think? Him maybe drive out evil spirit? That white man trick. Him paint bird to look like Naka. Oh, uh, white man bring bird from over many waters. Him talking bird. Welcome to village. Bird is happy that you make him welcome, Chief White Feather. Him look like Naka. My people sick, many die. Maybe him spirit sent to help. He will tell you what to do. He talks in the strange tongue of many waters. Tell Naka we listen. Bird will speak. Him talking bird. Be still. Let bird speak. Skipper, say something to lover. If you ever lose your jaw, tackle do it now. Captain, why won't he talk? Just being cussed. Skipper, unfurl your tongue or I'll lay a marlin spike around your ears. White man lie. Bird not talk. White man trick. Need you do something, Captain? He's in a doldrum. Bird not talk. Him not spirit. Him white man trick. Not out. Him trick. Hey, fella. Go over to Skipper. Quiet. Bird will speak. Go to Skipper, King. See, him talk to animals. Him talk to dog. Lay down, King. Lay down, boy. See, the dog obeys him. Him, spirit of Naka. Big dog do what birds say. Him, Naka. Animal know what Naka say. Dog lie down for Naka. Him, not Naka. Black hawk. 
not say that white man trick. Hot, Skipper, hot. Get my hand, King. Get my hand, boy. Hurry up. Get my hand. Here it is, fella. See? Oh, do what birds say. Him, Naka. Animal, obey, Naka. My people do what Naka say. Him, drive evil spirit away. Naka, protect his children. The bird will tell you what to do. What him say? He talks in the language of many waters. Man of the sea will tell you what he says. What do you hear it? Hear it, you scurvy lovers. Tell us what the bird says, Captain. He says to scratch his picture on the arms of all the people in the tribe. He has a magic needle. This will drive away the evil spirit. Where is magic needle? See, chief, on his foot is a box. Tell your people what to do. My uncle. The Indians, amazed by the bird that talked, were soon crowding around Preston and Dr. Rockwell, eager to have his image scratched on their arms. Preston, the doctor, and the captain were busily vaccinating. But toward the back of the crowd lurked Black Hawk, the half-breed. He talked in a low tone to another Indian. Them not scratch picture on arm of Black Hawk. That white man trick. Bird is Naka. Him say do it. Listen. Burn first. Burn first. What him say? Burn him first. say burn first. Naka wants sacrifice from his people. Him say we burn our furs. White man's trick. Me not burn furs. Me kill bird. No kill Naka. Him spirit. Me find out. Me kill him. King was lying quietly beneath the low branch of the spruce tree on which Skipper was perched. He raised his head as he saw the furtive figure of Black Hawk creeping toward the tree, and a low growl rumbled in his throat. Suddenly, the half-breed sprang toward Skipper, but King sprang even faster. Me show him! Help! Help! Him kill Black Hawk! Help! Take him away! Dog, dog protect Naka! Black Hawk, try kill bird! Help! Dog All right, King. Get back, fella. That breed was trying to scuttle Skipper. Why, you devil and buzzard, I'll keel hard your back. No, Captain. You Let can... him alone. Get up, Black Hawk. Don't be afraid. Take dog away. Let him alone, King. Get up. I won't let the dog hurt you. <coughs> look. Look, Black Hawk's face. Evil spirit come. Oh, no. Yes. Black Hawk, you'd better get to your cabin at once. The evil spirit has got you. He's got smallpox. The early Yukon dawn was breaking as Preston and the doctor sat in the captain's cabin while he brewed them some tea. Ah, that was a good night's work, Preston. Vaccinating the whole tribe. Yes, it was, doctor. Saved a bad epidemic. The never sure done what the skipper said. <laughs> It was wonderful the way that bird learned to say burn fur so quickly. Burn fires! Burn fires! Why, yes, Skipper. That was good work getting those furs burned. <laughs> Look at King, will you? He just as much as says you can't give Skipper all the credit. <laughs> if it weren't for him, I'd have lost my shipmate. Yes, King, old fella. You did a fine job tonight. Good work, boy. Come on, King. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time and reach you from our transcription studios. Hal Neal speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>